this is how we got here last night well in the middle of the night it was 2 30 in the morning uh, pacific time when we finally got here so <laughs> it's been a long day that's about where we ended last time with our trip uh to spokane and uh yeah we got to the hotel a little late at 2 30 a.m <laughs> Yeah, um, well, if you haven't watched that part one, um, go watch it because it's pretty interesting. Uh, well, we had some charging issues as I was uh, trying to charge at a Tesla Magic Dock. And, uh, well, it didn't work out so well and we were really low on charge. And that led to, uh, well, a chase for chargers. So go watch that if you haven't uh, seen it yet pretty interesting but so now we are back in uh, Spokane Washington where we have a few things to do my father-in-law has some dental appointments we gotta get the car charged back up we also will be looking or going to test drive a uh, Tesla Model X we get that for about an hour or so so I'll show you that in this video and I'll go around and check out some chargers and we'll make it back home which is about another uh, 200 miles from Spokane so uh, a kind of a mixed video with lots of interesting stuff on it so let's go Can electrify America and we're just ramping up yeah we got here with 28 miles that is roughly 10 some percent there I didn't look at the uh, OBD so but uh, yeah by the way the bolt always shows up to 5% more on the dashboard here than it actually has so right now there is 15% showing but this could be like 10.5 it would still show 15 so <laughs> just keep that in mind when you're driving a bolt they're all like that so well we're doing good here we're getting 50 kilowatts so last night we did an EV go that uh, the charger itself is only rated at 50 and we only got about 42 to 44 somewhere in that area so you can definitely get more it looks like here at the electrify America that are rated higher they go up higher here so but uh, well we have to check out the EV go that was our first time at an EV go yesterday so now, um, well, we got a little time here in Spokane. Um, my father-in-law is at his appointment, so I decided to come over here because we had to wait there and this doesn't make any sense to just sit. So I came over here. It's only about four miles to get here. And uh, might as well put some charge in while he is waiting there. And then at 10, I got... Uh, well, an appointment, I guess, to drive, test drive the Model X here at Tesla, which is another about four or five miles from here. So I'll be charging, it is 9.23, ah, charging about 20, 25 minutes or so, and then drive over to Tesla, pick up that Model X, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, yeah, well, it was a long night <laughs> anyway. 
Um, but we got a little sleep about five hours, feeling good today. And uh, we got the day here in town and uh, we'll spend the night again. And then tomorrow we got, uh, he has another checkup and then we'll drive back, which shouldn't be a problem. We'll see that we can uh, charge up basically uh, well, the night before come up to about 80 or 90 percent here at this charger probably and then we'll drive uh, to wherever the next charger is on the way home it's no big deal there are enough electrify americas around and so far on this trip i was very happy with electrify america actually the stations i came to i didn't notice any chargers being down um, all the chargers worked first try. I didn't hold the cable up or anything. So uh, Electrify America has done great. On the other hand, uh, Tesla failed us. That is pretty sad though. So, well, we'll be charging here for a while and uh, well, I'll update you later. All right, it is time to get over to Tesla. It's 9.44, it's about 10 minutes from here. So we only came up to about 45% there, 91 miles. Well, that's all we can get, but um, I had nothing else to do but sit around anyway, either sit here or sit at the dental lab. <laughs> so it's time to stop this session here and uh, get over to Tesla. Let's see if this works. There we go. All right, now we can unplug and get over. All right, seven dollars and three cents. All right, better close this. Here we go, and now we're going to Tesla. Five-seater, white interior, nice yoke. <laughs> so I'll see how this is. Actually, I drove around the building here already. I picked it up on, hey, look at this here. This is familiar. <laughs> so they got a supercharger here. There's a service department on the back side. There's showroom in the middle. And then here, this I think is parts and detail. And they're doing deliveries here and stuff. So. But yeah, I got this. Um, now I gotta go over and uh, pick up my father-in-law and we'll play around with this here for a little while. This is our loaner, five seater, white interior, yoke wheel, and the falcon wing doors. They're all powered, so are the front doors. They do not seem to open all the way anymore, just this far. And then you have to pull them. But yeah, really cool car. And uh, I was driving 
it with the yoke there really easy actually it's not bad got used to it really easy um, shifting is on the touch screen there is no levers there anymore no stocks so you shift on the touch screen it actually has an auto shift feature but I'm not sure how that works I enabled it but it didn't seem to do anything got a huge frunk so that's pretty big but unfortunately the frunk is not power old-fashioned Tesla got to push it closed but pretty impressive car this thing has insane mode so it has chill sport and insane and drag strip mode <laughs> it's pretty freaking cool so but yeah our time is already up we just drove it around a little bit looked at it a little bit and man an hour goes by really quick but it's really cool you can uh, fold the seats down and it makes it flat it's uh, also it has a towing package so there is a, a hitch you can put on the there and tow really cool car super super duper acceleration i mean probably i don't know i'm not sure i didn't look up the specs but uh three seconds probably or so to 60. really cool um doors here falcon wing doors can be closed up here with the red button or here they can be open and closed from there as well as from the touch screen you can open and close all doors from here that is really cool and the view is just spectacular without having the top part of the wheel just looking straight at this and not having any wheel up here i love that so this would be one reason to get the yoke um, other than that it is a little awkward driving at times but uh, i guess i could get used to it not sure i would have to drive it longer pretty sure i could get used to it also this here is an interesting thing um, so this closes and then this closes all the way like that and then this is a little tray and here's your cup holders but then you can make your cup holders go away and reach down and you can make this go away and open all this up and you press comes back press there it comes back up I pressed so now we got these two you close this close it all the way got more room here for storage that's where the cell phones go charger in there so really cool sun visors are up there on the side yeah really cool car got your uh, window controls your door opening button there as always um, yeah it's fun to drive it's definitely not slow so let's sit in here real quick and I mean Let's see here, and then there's the door coming. Here we go. Now I'm in. I got plenty of room in here. There is a glass roof up here. In the middle, it's a little lower. We have the screen back here where you can control uh, air conditioning and other stuff. There's entertainment stuff on here. And actually, this just came on as I sat in here. So this was not on before, so it recognizes when somebody is back here and turns it on. Let's close the other side. Yeah, these doors are pretty amazing. So, yeah. And, well, I say comfortably. Actually, I don't know. I got a lot of... My legs are up. The, the seats seem a little low here. Not sure if they can be raised or not, but they seem a little low right now. I wish they would be a little higher that I have more support on my leg. <laughs> yeah, seat belts are adjustable in height there. Yeah, pretty cool. So yeah, it's unfortunately already time to bring it back. Let's take a quick look at the front or at the trunk actually. Let's get this opened. There we go. Really cool. So in the trunk, there's lots of room. So there's this little cubby here. We got a little cubby here, but there's a problem here. There's a, this, this hook that's in the way. I struggled with that earlier. Couldn't get it out. There, uh, yeah, that is a, there's something wrong with this hook right here. That's not good, but there's a cubby there. 
then you got storage under here there's this but it also goes under there so you can also lift this whoops so there's a huge amount of storage still underneath here so that is pretty amazing yeah tons and tons of room so for traveling this would be a great car for like four people or so definitely in this configuration yeah i like it um it's a little bit out of my budget <laughs> um because it doesn't really do what we need it to do that is one of the things so it does have air suspension it sits in low there's a very low mode but i don't know high maybe would do maybe it would give us enough ground clearance we need some ground clearance for sure so it might actually work because uh it is uh not too close to the ground i would say uh average about six seven inches so yeah i don't know maybe we should get this instead of a rivian so this right now starts at seventy-nine thousand dollars. not with the white seats but i could get black on black for seventy-nine thousand dollars. um yeah man that is an incredible price so it is obviously a little different than the rivian but it possibly could do what we needed to and uh, we could have one now instead of uh, wait even longer we're, we've only been waiting four and a half years for the rivian so it's not so bad <laughs> all right well we gotta close her up and take her back Genesis. See that white one? That's a Genesis electric car. What is that? Uh, this white one here. Uh, I think it's is that Kia or Hyundai. One of the two. Look where I'm at. Back at EA. This time I chose a different charger. Just for shits and giggles. But, heck yeah, look at this. Connected. No problem. Easy breezy. Actually, I think... Uh, it's almost easier to do it through uh, Apple CarPlay than uh, the app on the phone itself. I mean, this way you just, you come here as you pull up and you say that you wanna charge and you select the charger and then it tells you plug in and then you just plug in and whoops, off it goes. So that is pretty neat, that's pretty neat. So, so far so good, got a couple uh, friends here what is that an id4 and this here pulling in is a kia ev6 huh so a vw and a kia so i don't have to be by myself <laughs> all right um yeah for me it's waiting time again just like this morning this morning uh my father-in-law was at the dental place that's where he's back now to get uh some surgery done and uh well i done my test drive at tesla that was fun so now it's just the waiting game for my father-in-law to come out of surgery again and that should be plenty of time to get this uh fully charged here i think i mean we are what at about 40 percent or so so it shouldn't be a big deal and uh yeah what does it say there 45 minutes left until 80 percent so no big deal we may go higher because i'll be driving around a little bit anyway and uh, in preparation for tomorrow, I wanna keep it high if possible because tomorrow at some point we'll drive home. <laughs> so I wanna probably have about 80% or so, um, 80, maybe 90 when we leave here. So, 
but yeah the bolt's been fun and uh it 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 is different than the teslas we drive it is uh different a little bit different than the bolt we have um a couple things that i run into here all the time is uh actually here so the labels are down here for like the cruise control and i always want to press the button here uh especially at night these are lit up and then i want to press here instead of use the scroll wheel up and down um same thing over here for the check mark right there <laughs> i always hit this instead of that so that is a little odd to me other than that actually i got used to this relatively good here with the climate control that was a somewhat of a weird thing for me uh uh, about a year ago when we had this car it, it's still a little weird but i got used to it relatively easy um and i got used to using instead of using the volume control there i got used to using it from the back side of the wheel here so yeah i mean just like i said in last year's uh my little review that i had of this car um it is just the bolt is a great car there's no doubt about it and um uh, it, it works wonderful and yeah it's definitely it, it can travel it just travels slow just don't go to the tesla magic docks <laughs> well you want to go there and see if it works or what's going on um making sure you can charge there uh that it works with yours with this bolt for some reason it don't work um there's other bolts that uh left check-ins at both of those chargers we went to that said they couldn't charge but there was at least an equal amount, if not more, bolts that were able to charge, including 22 EUVs were able to charge. So I'm not positive what's going on here. Um, that has something to do with the battery recall or the software that was uh, put on the cars with the battery recall or whatever. I don't know what's on this car or if anything has been done. I don't think this here had a battery replacement. I don't see no sticker anyway, so not sure about all that but uh yeah uh fun little car um not quite as big as the model x that we drove that was really fun too um that yoke is definitely different it's comfortable it is uh with the turn signals on the wheel that was a little weird but yeah gotta get used to it too just like a few things here i guess but uh yeah well right now we're at oh i can see there's 39 percent uh maybe i i don't know go for a walk <laughs> it's the waiting game and that has nothing to do with uh electric cars really i would have to wait either way because i'm basically waiting uh for my father-in-law to get done so i'm just waiting here at the charger instead of i don't know where maybe i would go to the coffee shop and have some uh expensive unhealthy sugary coffee <laughs> So, all right, well, I'll keep you updated. Oh, I just noticed we have 5,888 <laughs> miles. Interesting, that's cool. Uh, we're getting a good, nice 48 kilowatts here. Yeah, I'll just hang out and I'll update you if there's something cool happening. Um, we charged up to, what, 96% there. Uh, session fee updating. Huh, it's still updating, maybe I need to unplug. Let's unplug. Ugh. These things are just heavy and bulky. There we go. Uh, okay. $14.80. Member savings, $4.39. Oh, I guess that's my Lyft membership. Ha, that is not bad. Cool. All right. We are up to 90 some percent now here. Ding dong. What the heck? I think it said uh, about 96. So we got uh, plenty of charge. I just got a text from my father-in-law, he's ready. That's funny, I was just thinking exactly at the same time that I just should go back right now and there was his text. So gotta go pick him up and see how he's doing. But we got lots of juice again. I did go pick up my father-in-law and took him back to the hotel. He just wanted to lay down and sleep, <laughs> which is understandable after having had uh, surgery in his mouth and he couldn't even really talk. So, And I went out and about to explore some chargers in the Spokane area, some other DC fast chargers. 
and uh, different uh, networks, so like EV Connect um, and some other ones that I found and uh, just went to go check them out, see how they are, how they work, tested some of them out. Um, well, I added another app or two to my collection <laughs> just uh, for fun. Not that one really needed to do anything. I mean, we have plenty of charge in the Bolt already. And uh, so it started getting a little darker already and uh, there was lots of traffic. So it was not like super cool to be out there. <laughs> but uh, I stopped by at the mall at the Rivian charger. I wonder if I can charge here. <laughs> Rivian, plug in to charge your Rivian. This one is free, stay adventurous. That is pretty cool. So this is the Rivian Adventure Network uh, Spokane, Washington location that just opened here not long ago. We can see white light here, white light there. I can see white light there and there and then back there. And then there's a charger way back there and I didn't see any white light there. I think that one's already dead and they just opened. <clears throat> I'm wondering if anybody ever plugged in here with a non-Rivian. I think I'm going to try that right now. See what it says it's pretty hard to move Rivian vehicles only can't charge <laughs> dang all right can't charge the bolt here darn but uh let's see here so these are all on this one out here seems to be already dead yep no white light anyway the screen is on it says available but no white light so who knows it's kind of like a an Electrify America thing. <laughs> half the stuff works, half the stuff don't. Huh? So I guess here you could uh, use this spot right here as a uh, trailer spot. Pull in here, pull in from that side, coming in here and then plugging in this one right here. But yeah, light is already off on that one, so who knows. Yeah, that's too bad. I was hoping to get some free juice. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. I just wanted to come check that out. Um, yeah, I mean, we're still expecting a Rivian here at some point. It's been only four and a half years. <laughs> so maybe someday I'll get to charge here. By that time, uh, I probably have to pay. They will no longer be free. And it looks like here and here and here there's room for three more maybe i don't know don't they have enough power here i mean this should be big enough and probably they need to add a cabinet yep right there look at that here we go there is room for another cabinet yep so uh these things are only dispensers just like uh the teslas and the actual power cabinets are here i guess huh these are actually different. These cabinets uh, over here, they got some uh, ventilation up there while this one does not. Huh. That is interesting. Um, this cabinet there says Rivian on it. Right here. Uh, none of the others do. This is one and two. Huh. Interesting. Not sure, but uh, it looks like there could be three more chargers here at some point. So, well, it looks cool, even with a bolt there. <laughs> well, I'll go check out some other charger. Well, we're all done here in Spokane and it's time to get back home. And well, according to this, we got about a minimum of 145 miles to go. I think we'll drive to uh, Kellogg, Idaho and charge up there and then uh, make the trip home from there so we should have plenty of uh, juice to do so
We've done already 564 miles on this trip and it'll be another about 150-ish uh, or so going back home. caught up to this Ionic 6 and I guess I never seen it from the back but this thing looks weird on the bottom I don't know I really like the looks of the car but I guess I really never seen the back end like I did here I don't know what the heck don't like it so much anymore what do you think about this back end comment down below We're here in Kellogg, Idaho at Dave Smith. Basically the entire town is Dave Smith. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you're here. There's new cars everywhere. And they have a few chargers here. And one of them is this one that says bolt parking only. And well, guess what? There's this freaking truck over here kind of blocking it. I hope this uh, cord there will reach to the bolt. I'm not sure if this is a 50 or a 25 here. Um, there's a 50 a half a block down the road also belonging to Dave Smith, but there's a bolt already plugged in so um, We're here We got about hundred eight miles left and that would look good to make it home But we got to go over lookout pass and I did that uh, What about three years ago when we picked up our Chevy bolt in Seattle? I did that same mistake. I did not charge here in uh, Kellogg or actually at the Walmart down the road here and uh, drove over the pass and uh, well over the pass takes a lot of uh, power and the car doesn't know that there's no navigation here that tells the car hey uh, you know you gotta adjust for that so and then we came over the pass and down on the other side we had to sit an hour at a level two just to make sure we're safe to make it home so right now we're sitting here gonna plug in here and actually getting here took us forever if you notice the time and stuff um, father-in-law wanted to stop at a uh, home resource uh, store uh, and then uh, for lunch <laughs> uh, we probably could have eaten lunch here somewhere but he wanted to eat for lunch already in uh, Coeur d'Alene so it took us quite a while to get here we did some detour so we used more anyway um, and so, well, we'll plug in here and I guess we'll go look at new cars. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> so we'll check this charger out. I've seen some Blink chargers down there as well. Um, yeah, that was, it's not bad out here, actually. There is charging. This is basically out in nowhere, if you want to say so. Um, but yeah, well, I love this one here that says uh, bolt only. So we'll see if we can plug in and charge.
right, we're plugged in. It says plug inserted. Okay, not sure. Will it charge or no? Oh, preparing. We're getting somewhere. What does this say here? Um, maximum output 25. Okay, this is only a 25 kilowatt charger. Now it does an isolation test. Holy moly, what else it's gonna do? Can we start charging now? Hello? <laughs> I'm not sure what this is all about. As far as I know, it's free. Well, we're still waiting. Oh, I heard the beep. Maybe? Oh, stop. So EV charging. Oh yeah, I can hear it. Okay. And we got a green blinking light, so we're good. Well, this is good. This is, was easy to plug in because it has this skinny cord. I mean, it's only 25 kilowatts, that's why. So, yep. Oh, what? Something just happened. Uh-oh, I heard it unlock when I grabbed the, co the, the cord back there. Huh, weird. Okay, let's unplug again. I wonder what's going on here. Let's go back. Connect plug to EV. Okay, let's try. I can hear the car. There we go. I hear all the clicks. Well, let's wait again. And yeah, so this town is all, all about cars here. This is all Dave Smith, basically. Uh, isolation test again. Still orange. Well, let's walk over here real quick. Tons of new cars, all kinds of different brands. Chrysler, Dodge. Um, Oh, I heard the bolt beep, Chevy. This is what this town is all about here. <laughs> it is huge and it's kind of out of nowhere if you look on the map. But yeah, that's pretty much all it is. It's Dave Smith. Um, and yeah, cars everywhere, all new. So let's go back and see if it actually did. Uh, charge or keep going oh yeah this time we have green I think it's because I touched the, the cord and I pulled up a little bit uh, yeah we're blinking green but yeah since these bolts that they, they just have issues that CCS whole clunker is a problem to begin with so the knacks would be much better but uh, this locking mechanism on the bolt is known to have issues and you got to hold the plug up and because I touched it that probably created the problem so right now we're going here so um, I think we're good so I'll walk down I'll walk down this way here and look at the other chargers down there is actually a 50 kilowatt and a couple blink chargers and if the 50 frees up I may move down there because that would be twice the speed huh all right I'm down here where the other chargers are so there's a Tesla Model Y here performance and they're plugged into this blink charger right here and next to it we have a grand cherokee um half electric there's another thing back there <laughs> and half vast electric car so a plug-in hybrid obviously that uh is plugged in here and is probably full okay to unplug any time what's it saying charging Kilowatt hour zero occupants indeed it's 30 minutes. Uh doesn't really say anything. Let's see, is this one charging? It's showing something. Yeah, this one shows something here. This one has a 16.6 kilowatt AC 47. Okay, I don't know. So there's 16 kilowatts here anyway. Not sure. I got a feeling that uh it's blinking there, but I got a feeling this is probably fully charged already. What we got going here, a Chevy Bolt. 
Oh, look at this picture. I wonder if you can... Oh, it just went away. That was a, a bus with overhead lines, trolleys. Huh, interesting. ABB. So, I'm wondering if this is charging or what's going on. It doesn't show anything on the screen. It says welcome, connect and start. So it seems like uh, this is fully charged. There's a green steady light. So I'm wondering, because this would be a 50, pretty sure. Ah, uh, do we see that somewhere here? 50 kilowatts right there, yeah. And this one's fully charged. So that one doesn't really need to be here. That is just blocking. Wow, quite a setup here for power. So maybe I can find somebody and uh, they could move this bolt out of the way here since it's fully charged. And we're just uh, right up that way, right there. But yeah, look at this. <laughs> Cars everywhere. This is all Dave Smith. Hmm. And I lost my father-in-law. Not sure where he is, but uh, I'll go look around real quick and see. Maybe I can get to use this charger down here. And then we have less time to spend here. That would be nice. Before my father-in-law buys a car that he's not supposed to. <laughs> so, all right. I'll keep you up to date here and let you know just before we leave. Look what I just came back to. That is no good unable to charge i was just checking on it real quick here um let's see summary yeah it stopped again for some reason that is odd let's unplug connect plug to ev dang I don't know, somebody touching it maybe, somebody stumbled over the court. Because, uh, yeah, the truck that was parked here where it says no parking, <laughs> the guy left. So maybe they stumbled over the court and they triggered something. So we'll start over again and we'll see. I'll go see if I can find somebody so we can move the car, maybe. Um, I was actually, oh, it still shows unable to charge here. Doesn't show anything there. Communication failed. Oh. Let's try this again. Unplug. Man, that's a struggle. Summary. Okay, connect plug to EV. I don't see nothing. Oh, there we go. Oh, look. Holding the plug up. As soon as I let go of the plug, this uh, orange light goes away. So let's bring this in. Something happened. Up. So there's something going on, the usual bolt stuff with this charge port here. I wonder if we're gonna go or not. Uh, I hear some clicking at the charger. There's the beep. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> we'll let it sit like this. So currently we're charging. Okay. We're not gonna get anywhere like this. I wanted to see how if it is a 25 or it says 25, but some people said it's a 50, but I have my doubts. Let's turn it on. So we are getting a whole 18. <laughs> So the car is powering up right now, so maybe we will get 20 or something. 
that's about it though so yeah it's only a 25. all right i talked to a wonderful young lady here uh in the service area and uh, she called somebody and it looks like the bolt's gone so we're still going here at this point so there's definitely issues here so we're clicking there we go we'll put this back here if we can there we go all right go down to the other one the truck's back <laughs> i guess it's one of their parts trucks or something i don't know who knows but it's weird that he parks in the no parking and uh if you look how he parked over the line it's a little tough so let's see let's go out here all about new cars here holy moly Ooh, there's a guy on a little uh electric scooter coming here <laughs> guess he's got to get around town with that thing all right let's see where are we going over there it is open now so we gotta turn here and we'll go in here oh this is really nice they're nice people here she was a wonderful young lady and uh yeah all right <laughs> we're here hopefully we can plug in and make this work maybe i should leave this powered up so i can see how much we get out of this here hmm? all right let's plug in if we can open this up again and here welcome connect we'll take this a little hard to do with the camera in hand connect okay start preparing i heard a click we got the light there so that's a good thing and it's pulling a little bit but it seems to be okay at this point we'll find out here preparing to charge setting up communication I hear clicking oh wonderful all right so yep, we're at 55 percent let's see here charging 46 kilowatts woohoo that is about three times as much as we got over there huh we had about 17 18 or so so we get about three times as much here that is perfect this is beautiful well uh, uh thank you to uh dave smith for letting us charge here for free and very nice employees moving the car out of the way um this is super great that's uh yeah great service here for us as basically we're a non-customer we do own no gm <laughs> it's not even ours so but it's it is really nice um yeah this is a a car mecca here <laughs> yep let's see here real quick well it shows uh 38 37 38 kilowatts now here okay and let's see what it shows here at the station this shows 40 wow that's like two kilowatt loss um well the car is on that is probably one of the reasons um, maybe the heat the climate control whatever huh so let's shut this off and uh 35 minutes to 80 percent so i guess we'll spend about 35 minutes here we don't need more than 80 percent uh 80 percent will be fine we just need this extra choose to get over uh the pass and the car doesn't know about the pass so it gives you enough range showing there but then it will barely make the minimum because we got to climb quite a ways up there. Look out, there's a ski area actually on top. So that just kind of tells you a little bit about the elevation. I think it's uh, 
five or six thousand feet up or something i'm not 100 percent sure i guess we'll see when we get over it walked around town a bit went to the bathroom again and uh here we are 87 percent we got 21.106 kilowatt hours we're only going at 19 now been here 50 minutes explored the town a little bit usually or the plan was to have lunch here actually but uh, <laughs> that didn't work out so time to stop and we have plenty of juice to make it home and get over lookout pass thank you very much dave smith for the free charge here <coughs> those ccs they just kind of suck <laughs> They're hard to get out, they're heavy, they're big and clunky. I don't know, I like the knacks. All right, stop the complaining and get in the car and see where we're at. Okay, the car shows us 190 miles, so we got plenty. So we only got about 113 miles to go to get home, but it goes over the pass. So that will eat up some of that 190 there. Uh, yeah, because it's a long uphill and uh, way less downhill on the other side. <laughs> well, off we go.
still going downhill, but you can see we're using power when going downhill and we actually have a yellow ring. So even though we're going downhill, we're still not gaining much, but we're definitely doing better than going uphill. a familiar place those two cars look very familiar <laughs> all right we made it we're home let's see here oh we got 63 miles left we're doing good well we had plenty when we uh, left Dave Smith there in Kellogg Idaho we done a bunch of miles on this trip we done 752.3 miles and wow, average 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour is pretty high, I think, at least for me. So our bolt usually averaged about 2.8, 2.9. Um, well, I guess mostly driving in uh, Washington or mostly. There was from here to um, like St. Regis, there is an 80 mile speed limit. 
80 mile per hour speed limit. After that, it drops down, and then uh, Idaho and uh, uh, Washington have lower speed limits, and quite frequently it was even only 60. So um, that's probably why. But well, we made it real easy here, and we brought this thing up from 5,000 some miles to 6,000 some miles. <laughs> Finally, getting some miles on this here. So. Uh, we'll get her plugged in and charged up again and uh, well I gotta make some uh, calculations and things and get some details together about this trip overall it's been going pretty good I think I mean yeah little mishap there with the Tesla supercharger but that's about it <laughs> um, nothing major so yeah I'll uh, get things together and then we'll come to a conclusion here and I tell you some other details and uh, how much we spent on charging and all that good stuff. So, well, I'll see you. Well, you'll see me in a second, but for me, it will be more like a day or two. It is a couple days later. You probably noticed I got a little more fur right here. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we have to return the bolt. So I have to use our uh, 2013 Tesla Model S with 220,000 miles as a studio. I don't have a studio. So, well, the car has to double as such. Anyway, so our trip, um, it was a little unusual. But we want to recap this real quick. We made it to uh, Spokane real easy. Actually, we almost made it with uh, one charge. Um, if I would have fully charged to 100% at home and driven a little bit slower, we probably could have made it uh, with one charge to Spokane Valley. And that's where we actually needed to go. We didn't need to go to Moses Lake or Quincy. That's where I wanted to go. <laughs> Since we had to go to Spokane for my father-in-law's dental appointment, I decided, hey, why not just go another 120 to 150 miles further and just make a YouTube video about the magic dock at the Tesla supercharger, right? I mean, sounds simple enough. Um, yeah. <laughs> Other than the few issues we had that we couldn't charge there. And I just drove the thing down to the single digits. So it became a little issue. But hey, as long as I do the stupid stuff, you don't have to. So <laughs> you can learn from me being stupid. So it's much easier for you. So what do we get out of this? Um, well, don't drive down to the single digits if you don't know if the charger there will actually work with your vehicle or if the charger works, period. With uh, CCS, it is still a little bit of an issue. With the Teslas, we don't really have that issue. I mean, we just use the navigation. The navigation tells us real time if the chargers are up and running and there's no such issue. On the other hand, with uh, CCS, even with Electrify America, on our trip uh, last year in August, where we did 900 miles to St. George in one day, we used the CCS chargers of Electrify America. And uh, at several of them, it said like there's th that and that one is down, but this one and that one works. And then when we got there, uh, no, it was completely different. Sometimes those that were supposed to be down actually worked. Those that were supposed to work, work halfway maybe. So you can't rely on that information, it seems like. So it's that is still a problem there. Uh, on the other hand, with the Tesla, that is super easy. So with the Tesla, I'm never worried about going down to one or two percent. I don't care. Zero percent is fine. I know it works. So, well, <clears throat> Unfortunately, with CCS cars, that is a little bit of a problem, as we found out, especially since I passed Moses Lake, where we would have had a Magic Dog charger and I could have stopped there and I would have still had uh, a decent amount of charge to probably find a uh, decent charger in uh, Moses Lake and get charged up relatively quick, even with the Magic Dog not working. But I just blew right by it, went to Quincy, and yes, there is not much out there. So don't do that. Now that said, if I would actually make a trip on I-90 going all the way to uh, Seattle, Washington, and we did that trip just the other way around because we purchased the Bolt in Seattle and drove it back home. That was our first trip in the Bolt. And uh, we had some issues too with the charging, but nothing major. 
Uh, it's just we had to switch a couple EA chargers, but overall it basically worked. Um, and then I was smart enough and decided to actually skip the, uh, a charger and uh, thinking I have enough miles to make it home because the GOM, the gasometer, showed me so many miles. It's like, oh yeah, that's no problem. Well, the car didn't know and I didn't think about that we had to go over the pass. And that's another thing I, I brought forward in this video. When you got to climb passes, mountains, <clears throat> you're going to use way, way more. And the car doesn't know that because the car is not literally navigating there. That's an advantage of uh, the Teslas again when you're navigating it actually takes that into consideration. So with the CCS car in general, with many of them, you would have to find a third party app to do so like a, a better route planner is one of those. Um, or just think about that. Don't forget about it. Oh, I got to climb a pass. I need some extra charge. So on our trip home in 2020, I didn't do that. And we got over the pass. And on the other side of the pass, we had to sit for an hour at a level two charger because of that, just to be safe to make it home. And, uh, well, this time we did charge before we went over the pass just to be safe. So overall, this trip was kind of messed up and it's not really a trip one can consider, um, like a family trip. <laughs> um, we spent a lot of time charging. That is for sure. Um, I, I spent what four hours, 16 minutes charging at DC fast chargers plus another about two hours at those uh, level two chargers because we couldn't do the DC fast charger in Quincy. So we spent a lot, a lot, a lot of um, <laughs> uh, time on the charger. And that is a bolt issue because the bolt only does 50 kilowatts. That just uh, yeah increases charging time. <clears throat> You can deal with that relatively easy, uh, even on a family trip, we done trips and, uh, it's, it's possible. You just make sure, like even on this trip in Spokane, we went, uh, for lunch. And, uh, so yeah, you kind of got to arrange things a little bit more, uh, in order to travel with the bolt because it charges so slow. Um, Overall, we spent uh, $56.12 on charging. That does not include the little bit of charging I done here. I got it with 100% from the co-op. I returned it, I don't remember, with whatever it had. So I charged it back up a little bit here and then took it back. But so we, we spent about 60 bucks on that trip. But <clears throat> overall, um, well, we can't say if that is good or bad because, <laughs> well, we don't have, we have the two free charges at the level one. We didn't get to charge at the magic dock. So it, these numbers are kind of irrelevant in a way. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's just not numbers that we can really use to do anything. So if you, let's say you go back and look at our uh, trip in August, where we did 1000 miles from here to Las Vegas in one day, there you can look at relevant numbers. And then there's the return trip, another video, and you can look at those numbers. Those are relevant. Um, those give you a really good idea for uh, traveling and the cost here. It's it's a little tough because of the the mishaps we had. <laughs> um, uh, I think we did. Uh, let's see. We started out with fifty three fifty seven uh, miles, and uh, we were back home here with uh, sixty one oh nine. So that is about uh, what seven hundred and forty-two miles, roughly, and then I had another like thirty to take it back. But yeah, we did a lot of miles. I mean, uh, close to eight hundred miles almost. Uh, it was a fun adventure. Like I said, not really a trip that you can take to heart and say, yeah, this is how EV uh, traveling is. Uh, it's not. <laughs> it's me that messed it up. Um, I usually would have, like if I would have traveled to um, Seattle, I would have charged up in uh, Ritzville at the Electrify America or EV Go. And to, even if I wanted to use the Magic Dock, I would have charged in Ritzville just to make sure I could test the Magic Dock and then go past it to the next charger. So, um, but I didn't. I was just 
well, stupid and blasted by. <laughs> Makes for good adventures. So if, if you want adventures, that's how you get them. But if you want to travel, um, make sure you charge enough and you have enough to spare so that you also can make it to a charger nearby. So you want to look ahead of time when you do these uh, trips. I like to use PlugShare. PlugShare shows all these chargers on there. You can filter however you want to. Um, so you can actually filter out the CCS chargers and you can filter uh, even those down to 50 kilowatts if that's what you want, or you can go higher. You can, uh, you, there's so many filters nowadays in PlugShare. It's pretty amazing. And uh, so I use PlugShare to find those chargers. And then you just, as you're looking at your chargers and the, um, then you can go in and look at the check-ins that people leave behind. They say, oh yeah, this, this didn't work right or this worked or th three of them were down the other day. And then you have an idea of what to expect, but it's just an idea. It's not like you really know, but uh, it gives you an idea. And, and so then you can decide, oh, I might as well charge higher uh, the charger before. And maybe here I have this backup charger. So you can go to another charger that is closer nearby somewhere. Like for us in Quincy, all these chargers on uh, PlugShare pretty much said, yeah, they're not working. and that's exactly what we experienced. We didn't find any level twos working in Quincy. So we luckily found a nice lady that let us plug in at the NEMA 1450. So um, <clears throat> overall, uh, an interesting trip. Make sure you plan ahead um, a little bit more than we do. Don't take the risks. Um, yeah, I, I'm just kind of, risk taker adventurous <laughs> so i just blasted by there i should have stopped in uh, moses lake checked out that magic dock and then i would have known it doesn't work then i probably wouldn't have driven to quincy and i could have found hopefully because it was earlier in the day i possibly could have uh, found a dc fast charger that works in quincy if not, it would have been an hour charge there to make it back to Ritzville rather than an hour charge in Quincy plus about an hour or so uh, to find the charger or more than an hour. So we wasted a lot of time there. But it was a fun trip. Now, if we would just have done the trip we needed to to go to Spokane and back, this would have been easy breezy because uh, we were just a few miles from the Electrify America charger where we stayed at the hotel. And that was just like three minutes from where my father-in-law's dental appointment was. And behind that building on the other side, there was a school and they had a DC fast charger. So I didn't know that at the time when we first got there. I figured that out later. But so if we just would have done this trip, um, I could have just went back there and plug it in and just sit at the dental place. But um, in any event, it's it's kind of boring to sit at the dental place. So just driving a couple miles over to Electrify America and just go to Wally Mart and PetSmart and whatever uh, worked out much better for me anyway. So um, yeah, so the, the trip to Spokane itself and back was easy breezy so that is not an issue and that would have been basically the real trip and then i came along and messed it all up so <laughs> yeah so anyway learn from my mistakes okay <laughs> don't make your own it's uh much quicker to learn from me rather than being stuck for a couple hours trying to find a charger and um, yeah, it could be also much cheaper. You may have to tow your vehicle if you can't find the charger. So yes, so learn from my mistakes, okay? So yeah, uh, that was another interesting trip. We'll have more trips coming. So yeah, go check out all our other road trips we have. We have so many. So if you haven't been following the channel for a long time, go back uh, and look at our uh, road trips we've done. We, we have done many, many road trips with the Model S that I'm sitting in that now has over 220,000 miles. We have the 2018 uh, Tesla Model 3. We have road trips with the 2020 Chevy Bolt. We have the road trips with the Bolt EUV. So there's lots of good information out there that you can find in our trips. Like I said, learn from my mistakes. You can literally see what I done and what works and what don't. So go check that out. Also go down below in the description and hit the link for the Redbubble store. We got some cool t-shirts there and stuff. You might like something. 
Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.